Gap Training Center, uh, which I just started the, uh, the beginning of January. And uh, previously, I was active duty at Fort Town Gap until July when I retired from the Army National Guard. So I'm here um, on behalf of the uh, Garrison Commander, uh, Colonel Lane Marshall, and uh, Dave Wiseneck, the Deputy Base Operations Manager, who sends his regards. He was unable to attend because his daughter's having surgery today. So I'm filling in for him. Excellent. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, Mr. Wiseneck wanted me to just bring some updates uh, to you and uh, some things that are going on at Fort Eaton Town Gap in the, in the future here. Um, Looking back at the first quarter of uh, 2020, which for us started in October uh, for our training year, um, our use of Fort Town Gap has uh, increased a little bit from last the previous year. Um, as of two days ago, February 4th, we had a total of 41,812 uh, personnel uh, that have trained at Fort Town Gap, which equates to based on the time that they were training at, at the Gap, uh, 212,078 man days. Um, the first quarter saw an increase of over 3,100 personnel being trained there from the same time in uh, 2019 and a corresponding increase of 1,200 man days. Now, uh, the second quarter we're showing, uh, we're anticipating a slight decline in the numbers compared to last year. Uh, but with the, our peak training period starting in the spring and ramping up to the, the summer hours, uh, summer uh, training periods, we expect that to increase significantly. And we're on par for the training that we're anticipating from, from last year. So uh, again, we're the uh, busiest National Guard uh, post in the United States. So we're, we're proud of that and we're, I you know Colonel Marshall's uh, goal is to continue to improve our, our facilities there and uh, increase our usage of the post, make us, you know, keep us viable in the, in the state. Um, just things that are happening close in, uh, starting uh, tomorrow through Sunday, uh, there's a, uh, we're hosting demolition training at the, at the Gap. Uh, the Public Affairs Office had put it out notices to the local communities uh, that there will be increased noise levels from that. Um, it probably won't be as much as when they're firing artillery, but you know they're still going to be doing demolitions on our, our ranges. So uh, that is coming up, and the, the hours for that is uh, scheduled 8 in the morning until 11 p.m. at night, and that can vary based on the weather and everything else that transpires. Um, also, with the uh, 28th Expeditionary Combat Aviation Brigade, um, they're getting ready to deploy. So there's a lot more uh, flying going on right now as they prepare to go out in this later on in the spring for deployment. So, and with the <coughs> Army Airfield there, um, you know, we normally have over 1,200 air movements per month there. So there's a lot more activity and. I live down in Elizabethtown, I've even noticed it down there. So, you know, you see a lot more helicopters flying around and that, that will probably stay steady until they, they leave for their deployment. Um, other than that, the next major training event we have, other than the annual trainings that normally take place at the Gap, uh, from September, October, we have a warfighter exercise. Uh, this is um, you know, we've had a number in the past, and it brings a lot of soldiers into the area. Uh, this one is from, it's actually the 28th Infantry Division. Previously, I think the last one we had was from you know, Texas. So we have picked up a lot of this training from, originally it was held at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and then Camp Atterbury, but we made ourselves very, um, uh, our training center in MTC there has really picked up um, a lot of these training exercises. So during that time, we expect uh, around 1,500 to 2,000 soldiers coming to train, and that's not including all the support personnel that, that it takes to, you know, to drive the buses and, you know, make sure the facilities are, are in order. So they bring in soldiers for that. So it'll, it'll be a big event. So um, that is all the information I have at this time. Um, you know, Colonel Marshall wants to you know, pass on to you. We're 
we, that we generally appreciate all the you know our community partnerships, especially with Lebanon County, and uh, we we thank you for your continued support. And if there are any questions that I can answer or I can find the answers for if, if at this time, I'd be happy to, to to field them. I just have one. I may regret asking it, but yes. uh, your security system that's going to be. What, can you remind me of the time frame for that? The, the that is, I, I, I can find out perimeter. the exact, pardon me? The perimeter. Yeah, yeah. for the, I know they're, um, they're, the installation of the two gates has been pushed back. I think it's because of different um, other, you know, for the, I know the township had been working on a road mm -hmm. there, but uh, for a number of different reasons. I, I can find out the exact dates, but I, I don't have that. Already, it's, right, so okay, I, I just thought maybe it was, uh, you know, a two-year plan or however long, I wasn't sure. I'll get the information for you. I, I, maybe our cub reporter here has No, I, I just I just wanted your name again, please. Oh. Alan McCord. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Do you want to spell Alan? There's several It's A-L-A-N, M-C-C-O-R-D. All right, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you. Again, it's a pleasure much. being here. Appreciate I appreciate you. it. Thank you.